even a few years ago, they'd Elton John at, at Rugby Park, you know, in the town that was, was buzzing I, at that, well, you know. Well, that's nice, Ricky, as well. Your m- memory is maybe playing tricks on you there, yeah? because when I'll tell you when Elton John played in Kelly. Was it longer? <laughs> oh, I'm sure that was 2006 or something. <laughs> But Rod Stewart played Kelly like a couple of years ago, which is. Oh, well, maybe I was thinking about Rod Stewart. Aye, aye. <laughs> right, well, I've had this wee idea, uh, a wee lockdown experiment. <laughs> right. So um, I saw this thing online and somebody had put it up, and it was about looking for the good things in the community, but it was like a bingo card. So I wasn't sure how to use it as a bingo card, but I thought I can just ask folk the questions and see what they come back with. Right. So I thought you'd be a good one to try it out on. <laughs> right. No pressure right. then. Uh, no pressure. So we locked down an interview and I've got 12 questions. Right. So you ready? Aye, go for right. it. I think I can't, I think I can't, you're going to say to the first one. <laughs> right, question, right, question one. Is there a club or an association that you think has um, does positive things for the town? Well, I first and foremost the, the football club itself, uh, as you'd probably guess there, obviously a big Kamalat fan does that. But Jen up speaking as well, obviously your own organisation celebrate Kamalat are, are doing a lot to try and uh, engage engage with the, the community and, and coming up with ideas and and how to. Obviously, the idea is to correct the kind of young youth and the, the elderly population as well, which is quite hard to do, which has been the kind of theme of the recent project. So they're the first two that I would think of immediately. Right? Brilliant. Uh, do you know, I knew you were going to go command at football club <laughs> before <laughs> I even asked it. Uh, but what is it? What is it you think a, a football club? Why is it so important to a town? Um, I think some... that, well, I will, for, I mean, only in my own experience supporting Kilmarnock, I mean, You'll obviously remember the, the 90s when they came back in, when the Scottish Cup and stuff, that the town was a buzz. Whereas I think that the football club's really important to the... Like, I mean, if, if the football club does well, the community appears to do well. Um, I think you see basic things like, like an upturn in sales at bars and stuff. Bars are busier in match days, such so as business is getting a turn. But all in all, I think that the town gets busier on its own. And I think that was kind of, again, the only kind of example I can think of was... When Steve Clark was at Kilmarnock, the, the full town appeared to get a lift and people are more positive about where they came from because the football club made them made them proud to be for Kilmarnock, which hadn't been the case for uh, some years. Definitely something about the identity, isn't it? You're right, because I'm not a football fan, but when the club's doing well, everybody seems to be a bit more cheery and not lifted about the club. And, um, was it 1997, I think, they won cup final and the town was just amazing the amount of people that came out. I've never saw that many people in John Finney Street just reveling in, in the victory that we had. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, well, you had like 30, I think you had 30,000 Kelly fans at the game and the population of Kilmarnock's only 45,000 so that kind of puts it into perspective. Uh, 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 absolutely. Is there a business that you think brings positivity to the town and, and what is it that the business does? Um, I mean that, that is a kind of tough one because I probably should be should be knowing more there. Um, I'm going to just give my somebody I know I can shout out here, the uh, Nicky Brown at the Hard Luck Tattoo um, Parlour, um, which just sits across the ferries, the same side of the road as the Galleon. Um, and obviously Nicky's a tattoo artist, and he's kind of tried. He's all for supporting local business, and obviously that's became more apparent for. If I've worked with yourself, obviously, we quite celebrate Kilmarnock try to do as well. But but Nicky's obviously proud of, of being for Kilmarnock and, and what they he runs a lot of initiatives on his Facebook page and stuff about obviously trying to give away free tattoo sessions to people for Kilmarnock and X, Y, and Z. And I think last week there was a big story in the, the Kilmarnock Standard in the, the record online that uh, a whole group of businesses for Kilmarnock came together um, to give like a kind of I think it was a fifteen hundred pound voucher for that. What you could use across X amount of these local businesses. But that was Nicky that spearheaded that uh, to try and give businesses a bit of a lift during this lockdown period. So it was a case of the usual kind of Facebook competitions: um, share the post, like the business pages, comment as many friends. So it was getting 
thousands and thousands of shares and obviously that was given a, a whole lot of other businesses um, like uh, support as well as Nicky's own uh, hard luck tattoo shop um, and I think on that you've got the guy, is it Gary Cunningham as well that, that runs uh, Bar Luca who seems to do a lot of kind of good stuff as well and I think a lot of that's done to social media presence I think that if you've got a good social media presence more people hear about it but Obviously, you will be well aware of uh, other businesses that are actually doing more that I can think of, but, but those are like the kind of, well, Nicky's the first person that came to my head there right away, just for his kind of recent exploits in social media. That's a great example. I never actually, I had the standard last week, but I never actually saw that story, so I'll need to go back through it and, and look at it. We actually had a Celebrate Kilmarnock um, board meeting this morning, and that's what we were talking about, about um, all the businesses that are doing some good at the moment and, and how when we come out the other side, how we can kind of, you know, show our loyalty and support to them and even um, try and get a stronger network so that people will keep investing and keep that loyalty in the town. Um, but right, great. What's your favourite building? That's a tough one, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um... I mean, I can maybe skip and come back if you want to think about them. No, 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 give us a second to try and think. I mean, uh, what? I can ring the town, visualising all the buildings. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm trying to do but, uh, in my mind's eye here. <laughs> I went down my family here, I, I like my family in the architecture and stuff, but I'm not as, uh, as well versed in that. And Rugby um, Park doesn't count. <laughs> I, I know, don't worry, I was not was going to go for that one. Um, I mean, again, Two ones that obviously you are well aware of, again, that just come straight back to my head. As firstly, I think that obviously you've got the old picture house, man, that there's so much that could be done with that. I mean, it's bang smack in the middle of the town centre and it's just been neglected. Um, so obviously, folk would say it was maybe an eyesore than now, but you think of the there's unlimited potential with a building like that. Um, and then obviously, there's the old uh, Bank of Scotland building. Uh, that, Right in the well, that's actually in the middle of the town, right across. Um, and obviously, there's been initiatives to try and to try and get funding for that, and to try and give that back to the community. But I mean, those are two ones that I know are projects just now for, for various groups uh, in two buildings you'd like to see back up and running in Kilmarnock. Aye, that's that's interesting. You picked two buildings that are currently derelict and no use, but for some reason. That the kind of landmarks in the town, aren't they? And um, obviously, I'm older than you, but I remember the picture house being open. You know, I remember queuing up to go and see Greece uh, <laughs> and Jaws and movies like that. You know, so I, I know I've got an affinity with, with the old picture house, but I'm surprised that um, you know somebody like your younger generations think the same way as well. That's really interesting. Um, Right, I'm going to ask you now about a person. Is there a, a person that springs to mind when you think about Kilmarnock? Can, yeah, I'm well, laughing because we've been doing the football line again, aren't we? I, well, <laughs> well um, obviously, recently I would say I, Steve Clark or whatever, right? But, but I'll try and miss him out. But no, honestly... No, if you, that's who you want, go with that. I just well, A person with what kind of skills and gifts that you think that they've brought to the town, if that's who it is, that's... Well, well, well to, to, go, to go with Clark first of all, obviously, I think he played a massive part in rejuvenate the town, but other people have played a big role in that as well. But Jen up when, when I think of Kilmarnock um, before the arrival of Steve Clark, I would think of, obviously, the Marco Vanni brothers, the, the writers, um, who are obviously in all, what, massive names. I mean... Obviously, you had Hugh McIlvanny that was, I mean, he was the best pals of Muhammad Ali and, and Jock Steen and stuff, which puts that in perspective. Somebody for Kilmarnock, obviously, his mm. brother is more famous, you know, been the crime writer, um, Willie McIlvanny, and you see that, that the, obviously the new school's named after them, um, which is which is a fitting tribute to, to, to well, to... I think it's only named after one of them to be fair, but, but named after people who have given Kilmarnock a bit of pride over the years. But um, in addition to that, obviously, again, and it's sad that it's no longer in the town, but obviously Johnny Walker, mm -hmm. I, I say it all the time, I, I've had an argument with many of my pals for, for uni who were having a go at Kirby, and people for Kilmarnock haven't even backed me in this, and Alan Brown's one, I always say, we go to some ridiculous debate about what's more famous, and they're no comparable at all, but Johnny Walker Whiskey or the Loch Ness Monster, and I said Johnny Walker Whiskey was, but nobody backed me in that, and 
Alan Brown didn't even back me in that when I asked him, but uh, I'd say every film you watch, every massive film in the world, when they're at a bar, there's always a bottle of Johnny Walker in the background, they're always pouring that. Aye, um, the, the iconic square bottle, isn't it? Aye, 100%. And as I said, that that's what I ever say to MD. I say any big film you see in the world. And there was a story of my big brother was in Bulgaria, uh, which was a bizarre choice for a holiday. Uh, we was pals at some point, and then they went, and they were all obviously asking about that as usual. And they were singing that Kelly song, or there'll be Johnny Walker whiskey in the cup. And then the guy that was driving the taxi just stopped and goes, Johnny Walker? And then he goes, aye, and then he whipped out a bottle of Johnny Walker from his pocket, get what I mean? And that was all the way over in Bulgaria, just, uh, they know the name. Um, it's it's worldwide famous whiskey, and it's in every single film ever, really. Yeah. That they're yeah. at a bar. And um, aye, and like I said, that obviously with that brought industry, and unfortunately that's obviously been taken away for the town, but aye, if there's a name associated with Kamala, I'd say Johnny Walker's probably the biggest one. Aye something in the natural environment so we were talking about buildings and structures and everything what about the natural environment um something good and positive about the town well what i would say is that i think that in to be fair lockdowns kind of brought this more out because more people are out walking and stuff but i think that the the parks that we've got in command are kind of exceptional well i think they're absolutely brilliant you'll know more than me being a dog walker and my big brother's the same with his dog but I mean he stays around the corner of the Dean Park which is a brilliant brilliant area it's massive it's nice it's clean I'd say for the last time I was there but I don't venture there all the time I think that the K Park's a brilliant area as well and these are all right they're on the middle of the town can you don't need to drive out far away and the Howard Park is probably the one that I cut through the most because I would uh, cut up there to sometimes go to the football or if I'm going to the pub, if I'm going kind of um, up the top end of the tunnel, I would always cut through the Howard Park if I was walking. So, no, I'd say that the um, the the parks in the town are, are really, really good um, and, and uh, they're pleasant to, to walk in. Uh, you don't feel like you're trampling over rubbish and that. No, it's an issue that the town centre sometimes doesn't feel looked after, but I think the parks in general are, are, are well looked after. But one thing that I would like... Um, but again, there's probably as areas that you could go, but I think there's quite a lot of potential up round about where I am. Obviously, it's just who knows with, with who owns what because it's a lot of farms. But when you're out walking up the kind of back roads and stuff, I mean, I think it would be quite cool. Like, because there's obviously the Cessnock River that runs for kind of the back end of Kilmarnock County Mauchland, and, and that's quite a cool wee area. But it'd be cool to have that more accessible to people out in walks because. When I was out a walk, to be fair, maybe we weren't allowed to go in it because some parts were fenced off. But but things like that it would be nice to attract more people out to these kind of areas and, and make them more accessible to, to walk in, uh, like the, the areas that you've got in natural town. Whereas out with it, it would be nice to have kind of country roads and that a bit more uh, friendly to pedestrians. Hi, you know we're so lucky with the parks we've got in in town. I mean, you've mentioned three. Uh, the big ones there. Um, I know there's um, the, the lady who's in charge of um, East Ayrshire Leisure. Uh, she came a few months ago to one of our board meetings and she was talking about they were applying to Scottish Government for some funding uh, and they were looking at doing a, a green network and it was like to link up all the kind of outlying areas of the town, you know, like some of the states, um, the housing estates, so that you could link up all the parks and link up the walks into the town and I think sometimes I feel like you and I look at the local knowledge but somebody new moving into the area they maybe don't know where all these walks are so there's some way of having a path network or a wee map or something that could show people how to, to make those connections through the town and through the parks you know it would be quite a nice idea That'd be good because see even me, even though I do know the Howard Park, but sometimes I still lose my bearings about what lane to cut down when you're going across if you've got to certain bits and sometimes you're doubling back because, because but that's just me with my poor memory at times, but because obviously, because it's meant it and it's brilliant to cut across, but at times I'll cut through one thinking, oh, this will take me out here and it actually doesn't, I'm further along and I have to double back. But there's also another really good bit. I've actually not been down it. Uh, in years and years, but there's a kind of Cape Britain Woods, um, mm -hmm. and I think that brings you all the way out the other side, uh, kind of uh, uh, where Annan Hill Golf Course is, if that falls all the way, so that basically 
takes you for the south of the town all the way to the kind of uh, just before you hit the north of the town, which is obviously a really cool bit. Um, but that, that's a walk that's been quite popular during the lockdown period, so it's one that I'll maybe try and do myself in the next couple of days. It's quite nice, I think, walking alongside the river as well, because you get, you know, different sounds and that. But I think a lot of people, like you say, with the lockdown, we seem to have more time in our hands uh, and, and people aren't as busy. So that they're kind of taking life at a slower pace and they're going for more walks, which which, which is a great thing. And it's getting them out and about and seeing a bit more of areas of town that maybe they don't normally see. So is, is there a cult? Do you think the town's got a certain kind of culture about it? Um, when I try again, all I can relate to is when um, like with the kind of relationship that I've got, like the only kind of it's not very diverse because you're just talking about other people from Scotland more than anything. But with other people I went to uni with, people always say they see a massive difference with the way I am with people compared to other folk. Like I think that come on, I think Kelly's a, a brilliant place. I think that people look after each other more often than not. Um, I think there is a right good bit of community spirit around Kilmarnock, to, to be honest. Again, to refer to my brother-in-law, um, who now stays here, he's originally from Paisley, which is, obviously, that's a bigger town than Kilmarnock, I think Paisley's 70,000. And he says that he just can't go over, but how much better it is down here. And that, um, I think that goes through just the kind of people we are, because, again, to go with my mates for uni, if any of them come down, you walk past, you say all right to everybody and that, and folk are like, oh, you can everybody here, but you're like, no, it's just, it's just the way you are, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that everybody's approachable, and it's kind of place like, if somebody asks you for directions, you'd go and show them, opposed to reservedly telling them where to go, you'd say, oh, I'm going down that way anyway, just walk with me, and I think that's a good thing about Kilmarnock, and I, well, I'm, I'm proud to be for the town with that kind of mentality. I, I think that, I think that we do our best to kind of support each other, and uh, and I, but I just hope, hope that continues because I know a lot of people take digs at the town, but and there's other theories that folks say that folk don't like to see people do well, but I don't think that's true. Um, I think that on the whole, I'd say that the, the culture of Kilmarnock's one that a lot of people will be envious of, and I know that just from own experience that people can't believe. Um, how well we tend to go in with each other and that. So, but that's only my, my perception. I, I know a few years ago they, the, the town won some award, you know, the friendly shopping town or something like that. And I have heard uh, other uh, people that have moved into town say they do find it really friendly, that, that people, strangers talk to them more here. So. Right, you'll be glad to know this is the final question, Callum. Right. right <laughs> so what else do you think is important to the community? Um, I mean, again, I feel like I'm giving politician answers here. I seem to be doing that, and then even all the way around, I'm probably not going to answer the question properly. But uh, I don't know because I mean, as I said, again, for obviously the most important things are people in the town, which we've covered, culture, and that, um, in the kind of the manner of people, which I think is one that we should be proud of, and obviously a big factor for me is a football club. I think that that's. As I, as I said earlier, when that does well, um, the, the the town does well and happier. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I think that what we kind of need more than anything is something else to keep people in Kilmarnock, um, because it is too easy now to, we're talking about transport links, it's easy to get to Glasgow, you're in Glasgow and obviously with the new 77 built that every taxi driver will complain about when you speak to them, but uh, you're in Glasgow in about five minutes, you know what I mean? Um, to a whole different world to some folk. So, I don't know, I'd say that an important thing, I know that's not exactly the question to say, what do we need, but, but something else to keep folk here. I mean, what keeps me here more than anything is go to the Kelly Games. So, if I go to the Kelly Game, I'll get before it or, you know, walk straight down there um, and then I'll stay out after it and go to the pub. Whereas if I, but sometimes when games are known, I'll just go out anyway. But, if, but that keeps me in the town and spending money in the town, whereas if that wasn't there, then it probably would be easier for me to say, oh, I'll go a day out in Edinburgh, Glasgow, I'll go to Newcastle, I'll, I'll go elsewhere, you know what I mean? So I don't know, it's it's a hard one to, to answer, because I'd say like, the most important thing is the people in the town, and I think that we're all right in regards to that. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to see something else 
but I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, obviously, I want to see more bars and restaurants doing well um, to, to try and keep folk here, but again, that's actually the kind of, kind of um, way I could answer that, I think. Uh, no, I think you're right, isn't it? It's about that whole circular economy. So if we get people to stay here and spend their money here, the town becomes more prosperous and then more people want to spend more time here. And we've even noticed that in Celebrate Kamarna, when we put events on, um, the bars and restaurants are busier as well because people don't just come into town for the event, they'll go for a meal either before or after the activity and even a few years ago they'd Elton John at, at Rugby Park, you know, in the town that was, was buzzing I, at that, well, you know. Well that's nice because well, your m memories maybe playing tricks on you there because when I'll tell you when Elton John played in Kelly. Was it longer talking, <laughs> Oh, I'm sure that was 2006 or something. <laughs> But Rod Stewart played Kelly like a couple of years ago, which is. Oh well, maybe I was thinking him. about Rod Stewart. Aye, <laughs> aye. But no, um, no, because well, again, because that's my mind button again there when when you struggle to answer. But a big thing's obviously music. Um, here, um, there's the town's riddled with talented local musicians that in K Fest gives them an opportunity to try and get a bit of an audience but it shouldn't take something like that to, to give these folk a platform because I know it personally because of my big brother and, a, and his girlfriend and well both my brothers have kind of grew up in the music scene here so I know a lot of people in it um, and, and, and that has a massive massive impact the other year there um, you obviously you had the Libertines playing in Kilmarnock which was massive as well they were one of my favourite bands they played the Grand Hall um, and then you Unfortunately, obviously, the, the Dirty Weekender was, was coming back, but then that all got cancelled um, due to kind of poor ticket sales, which was disappointing because there was some some right good acts at that. Uh, I think Jake Bug was coming over and uh, the Coral and stuff were all playing. So, but again, the obviously, because I remember all these other big acts coming. Unfortunately, I missed Rod Stewart because I was away at another gig that night uh, down in Manchester. So I was actually glad that I didn't get to see the town as, as jumping as it was. But the only one I can refer to is when the Labour teams played the other year there, it was brilliant. It was like a Tuesday night, but the pubs were absolutely bouncing because everybody was going there and there was just a real buzz about the town. And Because ta some of the taxi drivers didn't realise we were getting attached taxi out the road. He's like, Christ, what, what's going on tonight? And they're like, there was a massive band playing at the, the Grand Hall. So it makes a difference. And then that's you into the pubs, spend the money, go to the Grand Hall, buying your ticket anyway buying drink or food in there, then you're coming back out, going to the pubs or going for dinner, and then you're paying a tax out the road. So if you can get stuff like that into the town once every couple of months, then the economy surely got to get better. But I know it's not as easy as that, but yeah. I just know that if, if, if you give folk a reason to stay in the town, they will and they'll spend money elsewhere. Cause even if it's a draw to bring somebody to come out for the first time and they have a a positive experience then you'll maybe come back at another yep. day you know but you're right it's a slow it's a slow process and it's the whole kind of people's perception and the reputation of the town isn't it that's why we're always trying to kind of engage with people that want to see positive things happening in the town and um and try and give them a voice for celebrate come on look but um well thanks very much Callum that's that's been really really interesting I um, know, and quite insightful and I mean things you've said I feel exactly 100% the same and then other things I'd never thought of either so that's really really been quite an eye over for me yeah aye, absolutely 100% aye yeah. but no it's other one if you need any help from all that don't hesitate to get in touch all right will do thanks for your time and sorry about the talk oh, <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll need to give him some biscuits the next time <laughs> <laughs> No, you're sound right, right. so I'll right. send the recording over to you as well right. then. Thanks. Okay, right, you take care, Calm. See you soon. Yeah, Bye. Bye.